Uh, some of you may have seen this, but I doubt that most of you have ever seen something like this. It's a Hewlett Packard uh, interface for CAD programs. So it has nine wheels that you can rotate and uh, does various things in your CAD package. So HP had a CAD package called ME10, ME30. Um, and uh, this was one of the interfaces you could buy. You could buy a keyboard and a mouse and stuff, but it had this weird weird things. So I guess you could have like XYZ and rotate, I don't know, all kinds of weird things you could set up this thing for. Um, it was a uh, Hewlett Packard 46085A, uh, 12 volts at 350 milliamps made in the USA. Um, and it had an interface to the computer that was called HPIL. Um, and it was a daisy chain thing so you could go in and then come out and you could daisy chain things together. So your keyboard and mouse would be HIL, and you would just daisy chain them all together, um, which is kind of nice. So my friend gave me uh, several of these uh, that he found in the uh, trash. Um, and uh, the reason that I wanted them was because um, I've showed rotary encoders before on one of my videos. I take it apart, and it's little mechanical switches and stuff. But these are... Uh, official HP rotary encoders, so shaft encoders. These are, these are the real deal back from the HP days. So HP used HP and they were, I don't know if the other ones even existed back then. I think maybe, maybe this was the very first encoder you could buy. So, so let's, let's take a look inside this thing. So inside there was a matrix of nine uh, encoders all plugged into this main board. So each, each encoder had its little, little connector on it. And um, then uh, all of the uh, things went together. Here are those two connectors. Um, there are some custom parts. Uh, there are some Hewlett Packard parts. These are rotary phase encoders to like direction and count. They like decode shaft encoder signals to the quadrature decoders that automatically decodes those. So it used three of those and it used some extra chips and stuff. It has a five volt regulator here since these are five volt parts and most of the circuits are five volts. So I guess the H, the HPIL was a 12 volt, uh, a 12 volt system. Um, anyway, so uh, the video today though, I want to talk about these rotary encoders. Um, now, um, if my, if my friend is watching, hey, hey Bill, uh, he was, uh, on the team that, that developed these things. Um, I also know the optics engineer who designed the optics for these things. Um, yeah. And I think if I remember right, I actually helped build some test equipment that was used for this product line. Uh, so I touched them as well. So yeah, so they, they go way back with me. Um, so let's look at one of these things. Um, here I'm going to have one hooked up. Oh, it's hard to see on camera because everything's kind of a funny, funny color back here. But this is the rotary encoder with a wheel on it. And I can, I can rotate it. I have it here just so it's stabilized. And we can look at the uh, quadrature count on an, on an oscilloscope. So if I, if I turn it one direction, uh, that's the quadrature. If I turn it fast, if I turn it slow. So if I'm going in this direction, uh, concentrate on that rising edge. That's what I'm triggering on, okay? So I have a rising yellow edge. And take a look at the blue. The blue is in the high state when I'm turning it to the, turning it clockwise. And when I turn it counterclockwise, the blue state is in the low. Uh, so that tells you whether you're going higher or low, uh, going forwards or backwards. And uh, you can get the quadrature count from that. And of course you can get the speed from that, but you can count counts. And um, it has much finer graduations per degree of turn, um, much better than the little cheapy Count, uh, cheapy shaft encoders that are everywhere these days, rotary encoders. Uh, these are very, very, just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of movement gives you a, gives you a signal. And we'll take a look at why that is. All right. So, yeah. So let's uh, take one of these uh, devices apart and I'll show you what's on the inside. 
All right, so we have a, a case and we have a shaft that sticks through. So, so there's a uh, uh, there's a brass a brass bushing in here um, that the shaft rotates through, and this is the shaft. And then on the shaft, as you rotate it, is what's called an encoder wheel. Okay, an encoder wheel has a whole bunch of little slots in it. Um, it's kind of hard to see at this magnification, but there's a whole bunch of little a little slot so this is an etched etched piece of metal and those little slots allow you to look at light that goes through there so if you have a led on one side and a photo on the other side those little lights will create pulses as you turn it and so that's the main the main idea of a rotary encoder is this an optical rotary encoder is a, is this uh is this wheel okay all right so what else is going on here then well you need an LED to shine through the uh, through the slit, and uh, this side of the uh, so this thing's going to sit in here like like this, and this side here has the LEDs, and the LEDs are down here, and there's actually three LEDs, and uh, for this particular model, I don't think the third LED is used. I think just two LEDs are used. So we have uh, two LEDs and they are under little bubble lenses that collimates the light. So we have two LEDs that shine light and they are collimated. Uh, a little plastic lens on there. Um, you could buy other encoders that, that had an index pulse and that third, uh, that third LED could be used as an index pulse. Uh, you'd have an extra hole in the shaft encoder, so every single rev revolution you would have that one index pulse fire. Uh, so that's what this thing is. And um, then on the other side, okay, so the uh, wheel sits in, oops, I guess I can just put it this way. The wheel sits in here like this, okay, and the LEDs come in on top of it, so that's how it's all kind of kind of packaged up like that, okay? And this board has little pin sockets on it, like the Texas, I mean, like the um, Tektronics um, sockets they use for transistors. They're a little in-board socket with a little bit of RT blo RTV blob on them. And that sits on here, and there's little pins over here, and that mates in those little pins, and it makes electrical contact with these things. And it's just it's just zero and five volts, so um, uh, ground and five volts, just to light up these LEDs. Okay, so these are lit up. And then this is the rotor encoder, and it rotates around. So uh, down here, we're going to have the little photodiodes that watch things. Now, they're going to get fancier than just one LED and one detector they are going to have uh, a uh, phase plate in there. And I'm going to try to rotate and show you the phase plate. I don't know if this is going to show good on camera. I think I'm going to have to change the magnification on this thing. But uh, there are four little slots on the metal plate here, and they are phased such that uh, it's like a vernier on a caliper uh, they move, and so you'll be able to detect uh, four states per slot in the wheel, okay, because of that vernier plate down there. So you get very, very fine resolution by, by, by doing it that way, and uh, better to not skip steps and stuff. It's just a, a, a fancier design. Obviously, this thing is super expensive compared to this, that other one that I showed. Um, and then we just have five volts and the two signals. That's what I showed them on the oscilloscope. All right. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. Let me uh, let me change camera lens and see if we can't show you these things closer. All right. Here's the uh, here's the wheel, and you can see the little slots on it. And there's like an extra little slot down there. Like I said, I don't think that's used in this particular product, but it uh, is available on other things. So that's the uh, that's the plate there. And uh, here is the phase plate that I talked about. Let's see if I can focus on that. Um, and yeah, so there's, there is it. 
And let me see if I can't put this together here and put this in here and then get it in focus. Oh man, this is going to be hard. Okay. Let me hold this. Let me get it in focus. There we go. All right. I think I can, I think I can do this. I'll move it up and down to get it in focus. Okay. So there's the little face plate down there. And I think you can see as I rotate the phasing kind of, kind of move through there. So yeah, that's what's, that's what's going on. Kind of hard to hold it all together. All right, all right. So that's the little face plate down there. Uh, underneath, we might have to take this apart to take a look at underneath. Um, here is the, uh, here's the little. LED section with the little, the little lenses over that. There we go. And these are the little sockets here with the little white blobs of RTV on them. All right, so that's what's going on there. There's part number. Uh, all of the uh, parts at the Opto Electronics Division started with a Q. And EDS stands for Emitter Detector Systems. So the Emitter Detector System group, uh, anything that output light and input light, so um, optical isolators, fiber optics, shaft encoders, rotor encoders, um, barcodes. That's kind of why I was associated closely with that group because of the barcode work that I did um, and the uh, test and measurement work that I did while I was there. Okay, let's uh, let's see if we can't take this one apart. Okay, yeah, this one's a little more destructive. There we go. All right, I pulled that little board out of there. Gold-plated boards, of course, back in the day. Um, and can we remove the little phase plate? Yeah, we'll just peel that back. It's just stuck on with some, with some RTV. And then we sort of see the same thing as the LED side. There's, uh, two little, uh, bubble lenses. And then underneath those bubble lenses is a photodiode circuit. Probably not just a photodiode, but actually a clever circuit. Uh, let's see if I can't can't pull these lenses off. All right, I was able to um, pull the little lens assembly off, which is just held on with some RTV. And yeah, there we go. Let's see if I can't get this in focus. Uh, so yeah, so there are some chips there. And you can see uh, on the right hand side in the middle, a, a room for a third chip, like I said, not used in this particular product, but the PC board is laid out to use it. Um, but yeah, there's a, a little uh, chip there and each chip actually has two photodiodes. So there's four photodiodes together. And so each chip sees two slots in the face plate. Okay. So there's two slots and two slots and two diodes, two diodes, and then associated circuitry to, uh, probably a Schmidt trigger in there uh, to, to, to look at the, uh, transitions and stuff. And yeah, that's what's inside these things. All right. Um, that was, to, that was a look at a, a Q, Q EDS dash, 7099 might be we'll call it the chip of the day or something i don't know it's a thing of the day <laughs> and uh i don't remember the code name for this project it might have been scorpion i know scorpion was one of the early the early shaft encoders and there was one called zipper um so every company has their own internal language uh, so when you go to lunch you're not using words that you shouldn't be <laughs> keep things secret um i don't know if this is the right terminology. Now, if somebody's watching who was on the program, let me know. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is uh, from the way back days. This is from the uh, mid 1980s. Uh, 
probably 1984 or somewhere around in there would be my guess. But anyway, uh, yeah, there you go. 